This is McGill's Burnside Building, location of the Math and Geography Departments. It's also home to networking and communication services, and the Data Center. Located in the basement of Burnside, the Data Center serves the entire university. The rows and rows of servers provide computing power and storage for more than 30,000 users spread all over campus. All of this equipment generates a large amount of heat. In fact, currently it's about 400 kilowatts. That's the equivalent of 80 ovens all running at maximum. And that is expected to double in the coming years. To maintain a constant temperature of approximately 24 degrees in the server room, this heat needs to be removed. Heat removal is traditionally done by air conditioning units with compressors in or near the server room. This is combined with a cooling tower that chills the water using evaporation to transfer waste heat into the atmosphere. But what if there was a way to use this heat generated by the data center? Next door to the Burnside building is the Automass building. It's home to McGill's chemistry department and contains dozens of labs requiring constant ventilation. All this fresh air needs to be warmed, particularly in the cooler months. The idea is to use this waste heat to heat the Automass building. Engineers are now in the final phases of implementing the new system. Here's how it works. The compressor-based air conditioners in the server room are being replaced with computer room air handlers that have no compressors. Inside these units are high-efficiency fans that pull the warm air from the server room and blow it through cooling coils inside the unit. The coils are cooled by chilled water, water that comes from the new chiller located on the 13th floor. The chiller uses compressors to reduce the temperature of the cooling water by 15 degrees centigrade. In addition to the chiller, new cooling units, called dry coolers, have been installed on the roof of Burnside. They use variable speed fans to cool the cooling fluid. The dry coolers replace the old, wet cooling tower system and have the advantage of not consuming water. Like the water tower, their job is to disperse the heat into the air. So now we have a system that has been updated with more efficient technology, but how is the heat transferred to automass instead of releasing it into the atmosphere? Here's how. A valve is installed between the dry cooler and the chiller. Some, or even all of the cooling fluid, can be redirected, reducing or eliminating heat being transferred to the air. Instead, the heat is transported to the basement of Burnside, where it enters a device known as a heat exchanger. A heat exchanger allows heat to be transferred between two streams of liquid. In this case, the heat from Burnside transfers to water that is piped to the heating units in Automass. Now the heat produced by the server room in Birdside can be used to heat the Automass building. The new system has many advantages. It requires no additional city water or chemical additives. The server room will be cleaner, quieter, and require less maintenance since there are no belts, compressors, or refrigerant. Humidity in the server room will be more efficiently managed. 90% of the heat from the server room will be used to heat automass. And based on consumption of 400 kilowatts in the data center, it's estimated there will be savings of about $50,000 annually for Burnside and $200,000 per year in automass. <laughs>